Welcome everyone. We're happy that you're here. Amanda will be taking questions throughout this webinar for Stacy. Um, this webinar series is providing online learning relevant to this COVID-19 crisis and today Stacy's going to provide a little information, inspiration for us. Uh, TSFA is continuing to address really important issues for your business and those updates are all provided at tsfa.org. The most recent is the Agriculture Workers Critical Infrastructure, which includes floristry. And that's very important if you are delivering or shipping out of your store that you have that letter downloaded and displayed so that if um, there's any type of law enforcement that visits your operation, you're able to talk with them about that letter. And I just, that's just a little bit of housekeeping I wanted to get out of the way, but I want to share today's webinar is going to be an interactive demonstration and discussion with Stacy, showcasing her versatile techniques for structures and offering insights on progress and productivity in this time of uncertainty. Stacy's the owner of the Floriculturist. She's, her lifelong educational journey through various arts and horticulture are met with her experience as a second generation floral designer. Stacy is so diverse, she wears so many hats. She's an educator, a consultant, an event designer, a magazine contributor, and a product developer. Stacy was scheduled to present six very inspiring Texas uh, pro in programs in Texas this year. Two, unfortunately, have been canceled. However, we're so thrilled she's here with us today, and she will be presenting four additional in-person programs later this year. Stacy, we welcome you and look forward to your demonstration. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I'm coming to you from Chicago today, and we have a ton of snow <laughs> right now, so don't be fooled by my monstera next to me. I'm actually in winter conditions. Um, I'm very happy to connect with all of you today. This time is it's very hard. It's hard for extroverts. It's hard for introverts. It's hard for everyone in between. And I know that I'm greatly missing my connection with people through art. So I'm very pleased to be speaking with you today. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we can do during this time with what we have, um, how we can build, how we can literally build with our hands and build in our minds to get us through a time period that is um, a, a big challenge. So I'm going to demonstrate a few things. I'd also like to share a little bit about what I'm doing to um, manage my own mental health, my own well-being during this time that is in relation to my art. Show you guys a couple book titles that I think that you might like as well, and just kind of give you a list of things that I like to keep by me, uh, to refer to, to keep myself going. So I have found that um, everybody's situation is obviously different. We are lucky to be connected with people from all over the world. So our struggles are all unique to the type of business we have, the region that we are in, et cetera. For me and my business in Chicago, it is a majority of it is corporate and event work. So I have seen it all go dark. Um, what that means for me is that I am expanding on other opportunities like online education and connecting with people and preparing myself for my future endeavors. So my day-to-day -day looks very different now as much of us do. Um, my, my hands don't have flowers in them every day. And actually in Chicago, it's been very difficult to get my hands on product. What I have turned to is building, which is why we've titled today's presentation, Time to Build. I think that we can all agree that idle hands are not good for our hearts and our souls as artists. So I've been busy with my own hands. Um, I've actually leaned a little bit more into plants and it feels really right. It feels sustainable, it feels responsible, and it feels accessible with what I have at home. A few of the items that I'm going to show you here on camera, you may refer to my Instagram. I actually have posted a few of them. 
And um, a few other ones will actually be shared with full tutorials. For example, the first one will be in Floriology Magazine in the May June issue. So you'll have a clear step by step then. I'm just going to dive right into it. So one of my favorite structures is always a circle. This one is um, posted on my Instagram from this week. Pardon the view here. Um, this piece is actually an existing circle and base piece from Ikea, believe it or not. But this can be created out of items that you have at home. This is a wooden block. This is a metal circle. It could be done with an embroidery ring or really anything that you have that's circular in your home. But I'm gonna teach you the technique I've done here with the wire wrap. The versatility of this can expand to vertical pieces that would be done on a wooden dowel rod. It could be the base for bouquet work. You could make structures that stand 10 feet tall in the same type of technique. So even though you're seeing it on a tabletop, it can expand to a lot of other opportunities. All I've used to make these wraps are Smithers Oasis Florist Wire in green. This gauge for this particular one, I've chosen 18. I prefer 18 gauge for something that is going to hold a plant or an air plant like this because it can maintain a lot of weight. It can actually be packed in a suitcase very easily. <laughs> um, those of you that know me, I know that before this, I was traveling often and a lot of these pieces would travel with me. So it travels really well. Um, 18 gauge is my preferred, but I would go to 20 if potentially that's what you have. If you went a little bit thinner and went up to 24, 26, the technique can still be applied, but it won't have the same strength as the 18 or 20. So what I've done for this size is I've cut my wire into thirds. So I've pre-cut some of them here. Now there's no rule to this. If you wanted to have your wire shorter, you can wrap them more or cut them shorter. You could even have these pieces extending outside of the circle. And if you chose to do that, potentially you could make them much longer. So that's really up to you and your artistic point of view to make that decision. But for these, I've cut them into thirds. So this came in black, and after I wrapped all of these around one another is when I used Design Master Metallic 24 Gold treatment. I'll show you my little circle that I have and the technique. So I'm just going to kind of bring this into camera a little bit. You can see how these are wrapped more than once around the circle. Once again, if you're doing this with a straight dowel, same type of technique, you have to wrap it around the previous wire in order to grab onto something. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Once again, pre-cut thirds, 18 gauge wire, pre-cut into thirds. I'm taking this wire and I'm threading it over and under. So if you kind of take a look here, I'm crisscrossing it. I'm not going here next to it, because what that would do is it would slide. I'm actually gonna come through the last wrap. And for this one, I'm gonna wrap this around this way. Once I have this tail here, and all I'm gonna do is tuck it on there. So the length that I have used here, it's really, once again, your artistic point of view. You can tell that this one is a little bit longer to fix that, if you wanted it a little bit shorter, you can wrap it around again and make it shorter. Or obviously you can take your wire cutters and cut accordingly wherever you feel that it is necessary. So I'm gonna show it one more time. Once again, this will be printed in the Floriology magazine for the May June issue. So you'll have a zoomed up close picture if you wanna have this a little bit uh, more detailed. So once again, I am not wrapping over here. I am threading through my last pass, coming around once, and twisting it again. And the length of this one I don't really like, so I'm gonna come around again and wrap it this way. Now, this circle is done in an imploding matter. If you wanted it exploding this way, it doesn't pack as easily, so if you are um, you know, made, 
doing this piece and you don't see using it again um, for travel or moving it around to a lot of corporate pieces eventually in the future, you can potentially do it this way. Now, another idea is it is versatile and you can flip it, but just be mindful that when you do, if it's painted, you may lose a little bit of the paint. So as you see, the energy on those pieces are very different versus imploding and exploding. When I showed this piece initially, I had simply added Tillandsia to the piece. These are not pierced. If you pierce the Tillandsia, you compromise the cell structure. These will actually just sit on there and behave themselves. You don't have to really wrap them in, which is nice about how they grab on. So if you can see, I just pulled it right off. If you are adding this for a client, you can wrap another thinner wire inside the Tillandsia and attach it to the piece as well. But just know that they really grab on there. This type of an approach to the piece can be done with um, maybe a miniature Phalaenopsis. Any plant that you can think of that can have an air root would be an option, or you can add water tubes and have a water source for your piece as well. When you are treating this piece in this exploding manner versus imploding, I advise you to try to actually thread um, really water um, uh, flowers that maintain their water source really well. For example, you can thread a hypericum berry on here. You can add succulents to them or even something like um, gomphrina globosa or chrysanthemum, maybe a buttonum. Something that can stay out of water for a long time could be added to this as an art piece and give you a few days of, um, of beauty. So all I did was reverse these this way, flipped them around, and if you had them out this way and you wanted to make it easier for travel, once again, you can just bend a bit. So the Design Master in metallic is what I used on this piece. Of course, you can paint it any color that you desire. I have a really cool one in Babylon Blue on my Instagram that I did at Florimore in Belgium, and it is exploding this way. A really strong statement with blue. And the cool part about the metallic paint is I think that it makes it look expensive. So you're taking the utility wire here that is incredibly inexpensive that I hope that most of us have in our stash either at the studio if you're there or at home and you can make something that looks expensive out of it. So here's that finished piece with the imploding nature again. And actually what I am starting next <laughs> is this big one here. Um, you can tell I have none of it done yet. So this is gonna be several hours of wrapping wire but we all have the time now to keep our idle hands busy. So this piece that I'm making um, will, the intention is to do it imploding once again, and I will be adding air plants, some sweet gum, um, dried pods, and also some succulents for it, and it'll be a wall piece. Um, this piece will be published in a book that I'm doing with Arthur Williams, and you guys will really love it. It'll be out soon. So that technique, please give it a shot. I mean, you really don't have much to lose. You, of course, could use other wire that isn't straight. You could use aluminum wire, spool wire. It's just not gonna have that same modern feel. So I encourage you to use straight wire for this. And if you do make something like this, I would love to see it. Um, tag me if you put it on Instagram, Facebook, or send it to me, or you can email it to me because they're gonna share you the email my email with all of you at the end of this call if they haven't already. So I know that when the wonderful ladies at TSFA asked me to show you some things today, we really only talked about one technique, um, but I think anyone that knows me or has ever seen me present knows that I always come with more. So I hope you guys are okay with it. I'm gonna show you a few more. Um, one piece that I have had in my arsenal for a while and it's tough to show you guys, is this tower of, yeah, you guessed it, metallic gold again. You can see I have, I got a thing for gold. And I wanna show you just really quickly how I made this. This is so simple. The floral mesh from Smithers Oasis. 
is the base of this piece. All I've done is cut it to my desired size. I used zip ties in four inch because that was the only size I had and secured it in a few places. All of these branches were added with bind wire. So I added them with natural bind wire, which I hope all of you have in your arsenal as well. If you don't, you need some in all the colors. But I pre-cut these in small lengths and once you paint over them, they really do disappear. So this piece, um, I initially did it to put in a low container filled with a water source and had flowers growing up through it. You could put a cylinder vase down in it and have very tall tropicals in it. It's very versatile. Once again, even if you didn't want to do fresh, this can be a place where you put your tillandsia after you water them, which is another thing that I do in my home. So um, hitting this up with your metallic paint or any color paint from Design Master that you choose after it's put together will just make all of those little binding points completely disappear. It is so lightweight. It can be done much shorter. It can be done taller than this if you choose. But I feel like this technique could really expand opportunity for you as well. It is a bit time consuming a little less time consuming than the first piece that I showed you, but please expand on it. Try it maybe with some different branches. Um, play around. Once again, show me what you've made. So this bottom here is really versatile and it can be put into any different situation of water source. You can take it further. If you don't like the idea of it being round, you could make a fence with it. So you can straighten out your floral mesh and have it this way as well and kind of um, undulate it and make a little bit more of a standing fence. Um, if you don't have floral mesh, which I mean this product is fantastic from, from Smithers Oasis, but if you don't, you can use poultry netting, chicken wire, you can paint it if it's that green that none of us really understand because it doesn't match a lot of our products. Um, but you can, you can use good old fashioned chicken wire as well. So I just want to show you guys two more things. Hopefully I still have you. This is something I posted on my social media yesterday. My, my daughter helped me with this piece actually. I wove the Liriope muscari grass. Um, the wonderful people at Jet Fresh Flowers provided a lot of product for a photo shoot that I did about a month ago with Arthur Williams here in Chicago. And I have held on to this Liriope muscari. So even though all of my blooms have gone to pasture, these beautiful Liriope muscari, including variegated, have um, staying power. And these are over a month old. So this type of technique with weaving would be done straight on a table. And we'll talk to them at TSFA. Perhaps I can provide a video of the whole process for you. Because um, it's a little bit difficult because it's face down. It would need to be an aerial shot. But this technique is used in basket weaving. You might say, I don't have grasses. I guarantee that you have a pile of ribbon at home that either you despise, <laughs> you might never use again, or maybe you have um, small amounts of certain ribbons that you're looking to get rid of. This technique can be done with ribbon. Um, I've done the same thing with even number nine, number three, and number six ribbons all in the same weave. And I mounted it on foam core and I've made um, an art piece out of it as well. And all it is is a simple over and under basket weave. These are, there's only one or two points where I added a bit of you blue dashes. You can see it's kind of poking out right there. So Oasis U Glue is always great to reinforce that. If you are starting out and doing this for the first time, if you're doing it flat on the table, it's helpful to have a roll of scotch tape by, by your side and you can tape down the pieces when you first start to help get that natural tension. The, um, the adhesive is not necessary. You can also use Oasis Cold Glue, but it does help you kind of get some momentum going on a piece like this. 
So what can you do with something like this? Well, you can keep your mind and your hands busy and you can weave, but even then these, um, these beginning ends of this piece can be placed in a vase. These can have be placed in two vases to do something interactive. It could also be done on a much smaller and a much larger scale. So the proportions of this could be determined by whatever you feel fits your, your craft project or what you have um, by your side. So once again, um, consider using ribbon if you do not have access to grass or potentially if many of you are in Texas, you might not have two inches of snow on the ground like I do in Chicago and perhaps you can forage for some materials that would help you um, complete this as well. So just one more thing to show you before we move into some questions and more conversation. Um, this is something that I show often. Um, wrapping dowel rods with yarn and also with wire. This is a technique that can be done on a power drill. So these are wooden dowel rods that I have painted with uh, Design Master and Super Silver first. And then I've wrapped them with all these different color yarns and uh, metallic wire. Starting those pieces off with a little bit of U glue dashes to get the momentum going and finishing it off with U glue as well. So these, once again, are another technique that we can show you on a drill if you haven't seen already. You can hand wrap these if you don't have a drill as well. It just takes a little bit longer. You do not have to spray paint them. You can leave them natural. You can tell that the reason why some of these will have um, a little bit of natural edging is because I put mine upright in styrofoam to spray paint them. So this piece would be going directly either into foam or whatever material I'd be using to hold them upright, rocks or whatever my base of my piece would be. They do have zip ties on them because of my last project that I connected them all with zip ties in the coordinating colors to kind of um, mimic that vibe. So that finished piece is also on my Instagram as well. Don't fret if you don't have a power drill. Um, if you don't, you should. <laughs> we, we all deserve one. We can get them off of Amazon right now too if you wanna try it out. But that could be another example of a quick tutorial that I can show you guys on video later. Once again, you can hand wrap if you want and it's a little bit easier to start a hand wrap with wire instead of yarn because of the tension. Um, the nice thing about layering different metallics is the surface texture has um, a little bit of tension because they're a little bit different. So even though they're reflective, they're reflective in different ways. And then when you bring in the matte quality of the yarn, you're playing with a lot of surface tension, which I find to be really interesting. So these can um, also be used in orchid planters as orchid stakes or really any type of plant that you need some type of structure and support. Um, maybe you have time to hand paint them. Maybe you don't want to use spray paint. Maybe you actually want to pattern them. Um, there's a lot to be done with things like this. And these dowels are a little bit more pricey than the common bamboo skewers that you'll see at the grocery store or uh, the hardware store, but they're sturdier. Um, you can also use the bamboo skewers. It's just the tension on them once they're in the drill or when you're hand wrapping, you have to be a little bit more precarious because they're thinner. So if you are using a thinner dowel, you may even consider doing three of them at a time for more support. So this is a good time to prep materials like this. Um, even if you want to do it mindlessly while you're watching something on TV, which I encourage you to protect how much you're exposing yourself to the wrong things, um, highly recommend creative programming as well while you're doing that because you might as well absorb it while you're creating. So those are some things I wanted to show you today. Um, all those finished pieces can be seen on both my website, thefloriculturist.com, and also on my Instagram, at thefloriculturist. Um, once again, if we're looking to expand a little bit more of that education, and if you ask, I'd be happy to show more of those in video form for you at a later date. 
So I'd like to take it over to Amanda and see if there's any questions that I can answer or any dialogue that anyone wants to open up before we move forward. Hi, thank you, Stacy. That was wonderful. And um, everyone is admiring your work. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you've made a lot of people's day. Oh, um, that's, that's I'm, sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Diana, did you have any um, questions, concerns, or anything we need to talk to anybody about? Uh, I don't have any questions, Stacy, but mm -hmm. I'm certain this group of very talented mm -hmm. individuals have a few questions. I don't see any type, though. If you want to type them real quick. That's great. And while, I mean, while that's coming through, because on my screen right now, I actually don't see anybody. So I don't know if you guys have that set that way. Um, I just, you know, I would like to share a couple more things, but please, by all means, you know, if a notification comes up, I can answer any questions. But, um, you know, I wanna be really open with all of you. And I think that um, most people that know me know that I always, I truly am. Um, I've, this is a challenging time. And um, none of us are a stranger to struggle right now. And it's okay. It's absolutely okay to feel that way. Um, don't don't be mistaken, I haven't been productive in this capacity every day. So I encourage you to look at the word productivity and maybe look at it in a different way now. I know productivity to me has a very different definition these days than it did prior to what we're going through right now. Um, what is it to you? You know, define it, make a decision. If it is building and creating, then please by all means do it. But I'm just gonna run through a few things that has been helping me. Um, I encourage you to make lists, make a list for creative things too. Maybe not just like, you know, go to do the, do the laundry and vacuum the floor for the fourth time <laughs> this week, or, you know, it, it's not just about chores around the house, but make a list of creative projects that you want to do. Perhaps it's not by the day, perhaps it's by the week. Um, give yourself some challenges and actually get them out of your brain and write them on paper. Um, build. That's what we just talked about. So get your hands moving. A lot of the items that you have in your home from toothpicks to bamboo skewers, um, really random objects that you have at home that maybe you're all finding because we're all deep cleaning our homes right now. Um, get creative with those items. So build. Build when you can. I encourage you to create an area in your home for your creativity. Um, one of the books I'd like to suggest for you to consider looking at during this time is by Austin Cleon. Keep going. Um, this has been really powerful for me to refer to. You may know his other books that are fantastic, Steal Like an Artist, and also Show Your Work. But particularly right now, this one's solid. It's um, a quick order off of Amazon, and maybe you want to send it to a couple of your creative friends as well. There's some really great things about how to keep yourself motivated during this time, and they're done in a very clear manner. He refers to building a bliss station in your home or your studio. Um, creating a space where you're allowed to um, just be open and free and vulnerable that's dedicated specifically to that can really increase your creative productivity during a time like this. So even if you don't have a lot of room, cleaning out an area, starting fresh, perhaps creating a mood board that you change a lot. Um, I have mine on a cork board and I actually edit it constantly um, with things that motivate me from pictures of my daughter to photos of me with good friends and teaching and flowers and different artists, um, whatever works for you. But build a bliss station, study your medium, um, this goes without saying, we always have to study what we're using. So if you haven't really dove in to uh, botanical nomenclature, this is a really good time to do it. My favorite book for cut flowers is by Sue Whale. Um, this book, if you haven't already purchased it, I strongly advise it. It really breaks down all varieties of common flowers and plants that we that we use um, in so many different ways. So it talks about availability, baseline, all that good stuff. Fun facts about why things are named the way that they are. Um, talks about filler, um, 
form filler, like what type of line flower it is, if it is, or we like to call them accents, not fillers. <laughs> and but how to care for them, where they come from, and then most importantly, the actual Latin name for the flowers. So Sue Whale has three of these books. There's one for branches and foliage as well, and for plants. Highly recommend it. I'm almost done. <laughs> so study your medium. Um, and that can be, you know, found on a bunch of different free websites for education. And I do not just mean flowers. Um, maybe you start to study all different types of plants and growing mediums like I am. Um, I'm studying aeroponics right now and different um, type of growing systems, propagation walls, things like that. Perhaps it's studying different containers, sustainable containers, um, wire, how it's made. But the, it's really, our medium is endless. So it's up to you to find what really pulls you. Um, be motivated to learn. Don't just force yourself, of course, but um, there are so many different avenues you can go into for educating yourself. And I strongly encourage you, if you haven't done it already, studying your actual plant material will give you a just rush of inspiration for how you can move forward, specifically just from studying plants and, and flowers. Um, so Sue Whale, those books are absolutely incredible. And then when it comes time to communicating about your product, you have the availability to have a global language with Latin nomenclature. Um, tidy up. So I know we said this about cleaning, but I don't just mean tidy up for your creative mind and your space. Um, as I've been reorganizing, reorganizing and cleaning, I've come across a lot of things that perhaps I started and didn't finish, or uh, perhaps that I wanted to take apart and remake, or find a lot of items that have encouraged me that are just basic household items. So by tidying up and reorganizing your supplies, that's a really good way to move forward with some motivation and creativity. And then I'd like to just remind you that this is gonna pass, this too shall pass. Um, nothing is permanent. So all the good stuff passes, unfortunately. The bad stuff does too. Um, we will be back together, hopefully sooner than later when it's safe to do so. Um, but until then, let's stay connected in this manner. And I hope that you keep going. Um, also, don't beat yourself up. If you have a day where you can't keep going, it's okay. Um, you don't have to be strong through this. You really don't. You just you have to stay connected. Um, and maybe that's not to other people, but then I encourage you to stay connected to yourself and your creativity. Um, shutting down a little bit and going into a little bit of solitude is okay. It, it can be very healthy for your creativity. But then when you're feeling ready to share, I encourage you to because you never really know who you're gonna meet, who you're gonna connect with, and whose day you're gonna make just by showing your creativity. Um, I'm not sure if any questions came up, while I was going through my list. Amanda, do you have any for me? Uh, I, we have a couple of comments that people great. have made. Um, uh, Stacy, you're great teacher. Explain every step process very well. And they, they really appreciate you sharing. Um, that was from Marcella. Thank uh, you. Debbie Waltman says, thank you, Stacy. Thanking, um, I will make one for my daughter. Daughter's mm -hmm. above the wall. <laughs> or, uh, sorry, <laughs> daughter's wall above the sofa. Um, Gina is complimenting you, saying thank you very much. Um, and just thank you in general for your inspiration. You're such a positive person and we really appreciate you being with us today. Oh, truly, it's an honor. And I feed off of it as well. I think it's important once again that we stay connected. And if it's not necessarily in this capacity, um, you know, reach out. Let's keep talking. Um, you guys will have my email. You have connections with me through social media and I really, really appreciate the opportunity to connect with you as well. Um, it makes me feel good too, so thank you. You're very welcome, Stacy. Thank you so much for sharing wonderful words of wisdom <laughs> and your, inspi your in inspiration to each of us. We appreciate, I know that you're, you're in Chicago and you're stuck in the house and it's snowing and cold, <laughs> but you'd never know it. You're a shiny, bright influence for all of us today, and we thank you for that. And hopefully, we will see you at the end of June in Texas, <laughs> in both Houston and Corpus Christi, and later in the fall again in Longview and Lubbock. 
and we appreciate your time today and you know we all together we strengthen that's what tsfa has been saying for quite some time now and we appreciate the strength you shared with us today absolutely it's it's here for all of you and it's not going anywhere i hope that we can share it in person on those days that you mentioned as well but um just be positive and know that even if that shifts and changes, there's still other ways for us to connect. And I look forward to connecting with all of you guys in the future. Perfect. Thank you. Thank Stay you. healthy, everyone. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>